the story of the Bloody Vendors, a family of serial killers who terrorized the Old West and then disappeared. This was just the kind of crime the frontier made possible. On October 22, 1889, a strange trial began in the town of Niles, Michigan. A woman named Almira Monroe has accused her adult daughter, Sarah Eliza Davis, of theft, alleging she specifically stole a frying pan, several pewter plates, and baby stockings. When the trial began, the courtroom was packed with rumors and speculation and a curious audience. But few people were interested in accusations of theft. Most people there believed Davis and Monroe were hiding a much darker past. As the trial progressed, the court and soon the entire nation believed that after nearly two decades, Mao and Kate Bender had finally been found. The Bender family, straight out of a Cormac McCarthy novel, appeared out of nowhere, committed horrific and brutal acts of violence, and disappeared. Their actions were infamous nationally and were inextricably linked to the founding story of the American West. In this region, English settlers saw a future of opportunity with few restrictions imposed by class, family background, or law. After the U.S. government looted this land from its original inhabitants, it was given to thousands of impoverished immigrants who hoped to build fame and fortune on the stolen land. Some have found the American dream. Some fell into poverty. At least 11, and possibly more, were killed by the Bender family. The saga of the Benders began in October of 1870, when two men who identified themselves as John Gebhardt and John Bender arrived in Osage Township in the southeast corner of Kansas. They seemed related, either through blood or marriage, though neither man ever elaborated on this. They divulged nothing of their past. The older man spoke very little, and mostly in German, Gebhardt talked incessantly, making it clear that they were looking for a claim. Uh, as per the Homestead Act, any federally surveyed plot of land was available to settlers willing to live on it and develop it. These plots were called claims. The Benders built a small one-room cabin along a creek in Labette County, the two men having been joined by John Bender's wife, Ma Bender, and their daughter, Kate. For a few years, their home operated as a way station for travelers on this sparse, desolate stretch of land. In addition, Kate advertised herself as a spirit medium, offering services both as a spiritual healer and as someone who could contact the dead. Kate also professed the belief in free love, as was popular among some spiritualists of her time. As Junuthis recounts in her gripping real-life crime story, people started disappearing soon after the Benders arrived, but no one thought much of it at first. This was the limit, after all. People were constantly dying or disappearing, being chased by the elements, drowning and getting lost, or simply abandoning their old lives to reinvent themselves. It wasn't until William York, brother of up-and-coming Kansas politician Alexander York, disappeared in March 1873 that the Bender family came under suspicion. A search party led by Alexander York interrogated her at her villa on 4 April of the same year and found her strange and hostile, but York accused her of murdering her brother, was not yet ready to accuse. As they were leaving, Kate offered York psychic services to help her find William. That night, York and Area Commissioner Leroy Dick decided to find out more about the Bender family without painting. Decided to suggest searching all cottages in the area. I paid undue attention to the fact that they were under suspicion. That same night, the Benders fled. When the officers returned to the hut, it was deserted, and when they pulled back the heavy curtain that separated the two rooms, they were overwhelmed by a foul stench of putrefaction. In the crawl space beneath the hut, they found a mass of decomposing human remains. More bodies were found buried in the Bender family's orchard, and more unidentified bodies were found in the well. A total of 11 bodies were recovered. The murder caused a media sensation and became one of the first truly national serial killers to capture the American consciousness. Benders existed long before he was H. Holmes, Austin's servant girl Annihilator, or Jack the Ripper operating in England. Also, unusually, 
It was a family rather than an individual, and Kate's role as the public face of the clan added even more mystery to the murder. After all, a beautiful young woman who champions free love hardly fits the profile of a Western ruffian, and Kate's dizzying combination of sex and her death sparked salacious media coverage across the country. What makes the story even more unusual is the fact that the benders didn't actually disappear when they fled the hut. Witnesses said they saw the fugitives flee by train, with Ma and Pa fleeing to Missouri and Kate and John to Texas. The latter was spotted in Denison, Texas, and later reunited with an elderly couple at Red River Station. From there, the family moved further west into Indian Territory. They settled there, were known to the locals, and were regularly informed of their whereabouts. Yet, apart from a few half-baked attempts, the vendors have never been caught or even tracked down. Because they were surrounded by criminals, including other murderers and thieves who had taken refuge in countries beyond the reach of federal and state law enforcement, it required the use of the military to arrest them. Show. And because state and local governments, as well as private investigators and bounty hunters, lacked the resolve or will to bring them to justice, the benders were detained after their capture, despite extensive national press coverage. On top of that, that's why the trial of Sarah Eliza Davis was such a sensation. Because it seemed like it would end easily. Half of the Bender family seems to have fallen into a law enforcement trap. They had to bring her back to Kansas. But preliminary trials to prove their identities added to the mystery. Of the 16 witnesses taken to the stand to identify Ma and Kate Bender, seven were convinced they were Bender. Seven were similarly convinced they were not Bender. The remaining two were unable to reach a final conclusion. Ultimately, their defense attorneys were able to prove that Davis and her mother, Elmira Monroe, were definitely not from the Bender family. They were released and narrowly escaped execution on a false charge. Meanwhile, the actual Bender's ultimate fate has not been revealed. For years, there were rumors that they had been found or that unknown people had caught up with them and quietly demanded justice, but nothing conclusive came to light. Beyond the terrifying details, Bender's story overlaps with these stories and flips them over at the same time. Despite their familiar names, we still know very little about the Bender family other than that they lived in Lovett County for several years. I don't even know Gebhard's relationship with other people. Could he have been Kate's husband, as many suspected? Or her brother? Was he related at all? Did Kate really think she could talk to the dead? Or was it just a ruse to lure unsuspecting victims back to the hut? Who was the real mastermind behind the murders? Mom or dad or Kate, the strangely enigmatic figure that dominates people's imaginations? How much were their motives greedy? How much murderous? The Bender family was never tried held, accountable, or even explained, leaving more questions than dead bodies. Their spectacle of violence suggests that colonization was based on a kind of salvation story, a story that understood bloodshed and explained the genocide of Native Americans as part of a larger story of progress. Do not believe the typical story of Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House at the Prairie Books, for example, provided parables of self-reliance and resilience portraying locations like Kansas as a crucible wherein the natural and spirit could be hardened and locate success. So it's now no longer unexpected that Wilder, whose own circle of relatives lived for a time in independence, Kansas, now no longer some distance from the Bender cabin, could be most of the many that attempted to provide a fulfilling end to the Bender saga. The Benders in no way seem in Wilder's books themselves, However, at a Detroit IE book, Truthful, in 1937, she advised in Target Target Market how, as a younger child, she and her own circle of relatives had stopped on the Benders on their adventure to their eventual home. I noticed Kate Bender's status with inside the doorway, she recalled. We did now no longer move in due to the fact we couldn't find the money for to prevent at a tavern. After the our bodies had been discovered, 
Wilder continued, a neighbor got here to the residence and talked earnestly together along with her father, who took his rifle and advised the own circle of it. Relatives, the vigilantes are known as out. He didn't come lower back till morning, and in next years, Wilder advised the target target market. Every time he become requested approximately the own circle of relatives, he could respond with a bizarre tone of finality. They will in no way be found. But as Jonas points out, this story is almost certainly not true. Wilder's daughter, Rose Wilder Lane, connected it with her family history and tried to persuade her mother to incorporate it into her work. Wilder refused to write about the benders because the subject matter was unsuitable for a children's book. But, in Jonathan's words, he could not resist the temptation to associate himself with it. Such a famous case, it says. Moreover, Wilder must have felt at least some obligation to reinsert Bender's story into the moral framework of his writing. Even without formal prosecution, he suggests, at least plainland vigilantes can maintain a basic morality. Such stories have been carried not only in the hit TV series based on Wilder's book, but also in more recent films and TV series such as Taylor Sheridan's recently completed prequel to Yellowstone, 1883. The true story of the Bender family offers a perverted reversal of such a satisfying moral tales. The Bender family, immigrants with nothing, built their lives on the frontier, but did not achieve it through violent conflicts with the people of the lands they occupied, but rather the other. Said it was a war of all against all, in which colonist violence was carried out in myriad ways without purpose or reason, much less morality. Through a disturbing, unpunished crime, the benders will expose the underlying lies of manifest destiny and the settler colonialism that made this country. A stark truth, as loathsome as her neighbor was found buried under her cabin in 1873. Remember to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you're loving the content. Your support means the world to us.